Welcome to the Business Speak Podcast, where we take everything you need to know about being successful in business and make it easy to understand. Whether you're a longtime business owner, newer to this entrepreneur stuff, or hoping to run your own company in the future, you've come to the right place. Featuring your host, professional accountant and business guru, Mr. Chill. So relax and have some fun with us as we journey through business speak, the language of business simplified. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to season two of the business speak podcast. Uh, My name is Corey Hill, also known as Mr. Chill, and I'm excited for you to be joining us. As you may have noticed, we are in a much different set than we were the first time. Um, And that's largely thanks to the two guests that we have today. And I don't think they realized until about 10 minutes ago that they were a key reason why we got a new set. I hope you enjoy the new set. Uh, One of our goals of it was to make sure that this would be a comfortable environment, almost like inviting you into our living room as we have conversations about helping people with business concepts. So first of all, uh, let me introduce our guests. We got Brandon Simmons and Amanda Simmons. And if you couldn't tell already by their last names or the fact that they're holding hands, (laughs) which is awesome, uh, they are husband and wife. And I'm going to give them a chance here in just a minute to introduce themselves and tell them a little bit kind of what they do and why and a little bit of who they are. Um, The title or the topic of our podcast uh, for today is Diving into the World of What's Often Known as Network Marketing, uh, sometimes called Multi-Level Marketing, and this is an area that I think scares a lot of people. Um, Almost like if you were watching The Lion King and you heard the word Mufasa, and it's like, oh, we can't say that word. Uh, In the business world, for reasons we'll dive into a bit, sometimes the um, concept of Multi-Level Marketing gets a bad rap. And we'll dive into that a bit today. But without further ado, uh, Brandon and Amanda, thank you for joining us here on our podcast today. I'm excited to have you. Um, Why don't you take a minute in whatever form you would like and uh, introduce uh, yourself. Tell us about who you are and kind of what you do. Yeah. Do you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. you want me to start? Yeah. So I don't typically like share all my accomplishments it's a little uncomfortable but I'm just going to go for it because I feel like that's important so that when I share more about what I do you can see the heart in it and you can see um yeah just the heart of this so I've so I started four years ago in the middle of COVID um I went to one of the top three ranks in exactly 12 months myself and then I built his position we can talk about that a little bit later about being able to build two positions but I built his about two and a half years after mine to one of the top positions. So I built to the top twice, um, not the top, but one of them in the country and out of Canada, I'm one of the four couples that has ever done this in Canada. So we're one of four couples that um, have built to that degree. Um, We make five figures a month. I serve on the Canada focus group. So I advocate a lot for Canada um, with corporate, which is a huge honor. And one in the top in the country for recruiting and in the top five for overall business performance in Canada. And in the last full calendar year was company wide in the top for leadership development. I was blessed to speak at the inaugural gold school in Canada. So that was really fun. And, and it will talk a little bit more when you, when you hear network marketing, it's funny because the reason why so many people fail at it is they're not networking. <laughs> <laughs> that's right in the name of what we do. Yeah, it's funny. Um, and so um, I built across, um, I honestly have three different countries in my team in my back office, largely in Canada and the United States. And so I actually don't know a lot of the people I most actually that I get started. Um, so they're all across two different countries and a little bit into a third as well. Okay. And we haven't specifically mentioned it yet, but just for clarification, I'm sure it'll come up again. Um, you are with a company called Plexus. Right. right? I didn't share what company I'm with. That's yes. okay. <laughs> We're not here to specifically promote for Plexus, sure. but I am. it has so it's been a the avenue-based company. Yes. Yeah, so we've been in Canada since 2018 um, and in the United States since 2009. Okay. And who is this lovely gentleman you have seated oh, next yes. to you? Oh, yes. You go ahead, Brandon. Well, I was kind of the silent partner 
for the longest time in, <laughs> in her journey. Um, I was I was an accountant who decided I wanted more than just accounting. I needed to do more with business, and so I ended up going into management. I was an executive for many years in the not for profit sector, um, dealing with government relations. I worked with the provincial and federal government and served on a, a number of different local and national board of directors. Um, even post-secondary was kind of a passion of mine. So I was on the Athabasca University Board of Governors for a number of years representing the needs of students. And so that was a passion of mine and I was focused on that. And so when she said that she wanted to start this journey, I said, go ahead, that's fine. I'll be happy to help. And didn't take long for me to see the potential of network marketing and realize that, hey, you know what? I actually enjoy this too. And my business experience and background can actually work really well. And we, we complement each other's skills. I always think of all the different, uh, you, you think of all sorts of different um, stories of you got like Jim Tura living with Boston Pizza. It was struggling up until he said that he found that accounting friend of his who kind of filled in that business piece for him to help He's solidify things. The and butter. <laughs> so I, I'm excited. It's just been a recent change. I've been able to uh, quit my job and um, in the not-for-profit sector. And so now me and my wife do this together full time. So and, and he's also in his MBA, he'll graduate in June. He does so much he can't remember what he's doing. And what is it what is it like to work together? Not everyone never not every couple could do that. But in your experience thus far, what's it like to work together? It's been good. Um it's this is new. We've been working side by side for many years because I've worked from home since like 2015. So that wasn't an adjustment, but actually working and coordinating, that's it's a matter of definitely a lot of communication that needs to take place in order to utilize each other's skills. Yeah, use each other's strengths. And I think part of like a huge reason why we're so successful is we draw on each other's strengths. We don't compete with each other. And it's not always a thing, but I've seen, you know, things go sideways maybe in marriages when like it's a competition or they feel threatened by each other's success and we welcome it and, and like use each other's strengths for good. So, I mean, it's definitely being a learning process with some communication a little bit, but, um, yeah, it's been a really big blessing. And I, we have four kids. Um, they're between, when we started, they're between the ages of two and seven. They're now between the ages of six and 11. And so, I mean, they're not going to know any different than having mom and dad available, like to be flexible, to work with them and be home. And that is a huge, huge piece of why I've done this. So that's been a blessing for sure. Yeah. And we may talk about that in a minute. I want to, I want to get a little personal for a second because I think this is a really cool story that I know very little about, but just enough to ask about it. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, you two are like high school sweethearts, right? We are. Is there a kind of cool story there that you got? Do you remember? I don't know. I don't know if it's I don't a know. cool story or not. I don't know. Is it cool enough? We So, yeah, we started dating. Were we 16 or 17? We were quite young. Um, so, yeah, we've been together for I should know this like we've been married for almost 14 so we got married at 20 we had our first daughter at 22 our son by 27 so four kids by the age of 27 um and I guess that was like also a huge piece of plexus because I mean we were babies when we got married and so he didn't have a schooling I mean he's still finishing it and we had a baby right away and so money was tight because having him one income I'm home with my kids and then he's working full time and doing schooling full time. I think that is like a big piece of like where I was like, hey, there's got to be something I can do to bridge this and be home with my kids. So safe to assume then and you alluded to it earlier that being home with your family and flexibility so of your schedule is a key reason why you got into this. Yeah, I, I have a background in nursing. I did two of my four years at my BSCN and ultimately I just felt like that's not the direction I was supposed to go. And so I walked away from it and I got, I got a lot of comments about that, but I, I've always followed my gut <laughs> when 
with everything I do. And, and at the time, like it took over a decade to, like, I kind of regretted it because money was so tight. And if I had nursing and if this and if that, but ultimately I've used my pain for purpose. And had I not left that, that I wouldn't have what I have now. I wouldn't have the flexibility. I wouldn't be home with my kids. I wouldn't make as much doing nursing as I make doing this now. And so sometimes it's a blessing actually, when we go through things, we're like, I don't know why that happened, but it ends up turning into and directing us to exactly what we were supposed to do in the first place. It's kind of cool when you actually get to see that. The, end the reason I'm like, I might be dead before I find <laughs> out that's where I was at. I'm like, why? But luckily it, it wasn't like that. That's not how it ended. <laughs> now, you mentioned your kids and them kind of growing up with this, not knowing any different. They must have some resemblance. I'm guessing you share with them mm -hmm. that you're fairly good and successful at what you do and your family's finances is probably in a much better spot now. And, they're probably the beneficiaries of that. How much of the business side of things have you shared with your kids? Like, what do they know about what you do and why oh, and how? They're like, so we, before flight, like we couldn't travel with the kids. So we were able to take two of our kids on the last cruise. So they saw like firsthand, like, this is what mama, a piece of what she gets to do. But I've always included them because I never wanted them to feel like when I was working, like they were getting the cold shoulder. I wanted them to see what's in it for them and for them to see it. And so like when I went Emerald in 12 months, we had a countdown thing with sticky notes to this like themed hotel room that they were so excited about. And so they were like ripping these off and they know that I'm Emerald. They know the next thing's Sapphire. Like they know what we do. And then when I got him Emerald, he was sending like, I was exhausted. It was a big month and he was sending me videos because I was working at my mom's because it was spring break when I did it. My kids had lice. That's a whole other thing, but whatever. So I'm like, we're getting this done. So I was at my mom's and he'd send me videos and there was literally like sticky notes all over our office wall. Like, so they're ripping them down and then he videotaped and he turned on my favorite, like music, <laughs> these songs that are like really like, da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. and they've got this like, uh, what this confetti cannon and they're like pumping it out and dancing. And so it, it's just a huge piece of it. And they actually like, well, two of my daughters, when I'm like, Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, oh, I do plexus and be a mom. <laughs> um, or I'll dance. Like they'll hear the upstairs, like hear like booming up there. And they're like, Oh my gosh. Like, so silver's the first rank in plexus. And I usually do a dance when people rank up and they're like, Oh my gosh, mom got a silver or, or they'll dance with me now um, to celebrate. So yeah, it's, they're, they're a huge piece of it. And I love that they see the joy in it and they don't see like that it's taking place of them. It's for them. Well, they're always asking questions not to about, about things. Uh, whenever there's a new contest or incentive, they're always asking more about it. Um, we just, one of the incentives they had um, recently was a Ninja Creamy deluxe oh, uh, if you oh, if you gotcha. enrolled a certain number of people things like that they did every month they do different uh, promotions and stuff like they were that so excited and, when they found that area yeah. <laughs> so they were asking all sorts of questions okay what needs to happen what do we need to do so we can get this <laughs> they're excited to be able to celebrate that one got that achievement and faith so, was like oh so did your mom sign you up i was like no she's like what <laughs> i thought that's how it worked <laughs> like i thought the mom i was like no <laughs> it's not how that Brandon, I'm going to put you on the spot for a moment, but in, in a way I think you'll appreciate. Um, I'm guessing if you were to rewind, you said it's been about four years, I think you said. Yeah, July of 2020. So rewind maybe five years ago and then contrast that today. I mean, on top of, I'm sure, the financial difference and ever, have you noticed a difference in your wife in terms of her confidence or her Happiness. just um, <laughs> like joy in life? Has you, have you seen a pretty big contrast difference? Oh, a huge huge we um, talk about that actually all, all the time like when i prior to um this i was the sole income earner i was working i had my own business consulting company i was running on top of i was working as an executive You're all schooling. while doing schooling just trying to pay the bills and so like i was easily 60 to 80 hours a week um hardly home with the kids even or if I was home I was locked in my office working and so that that's a strain on any family and Amanda definitely took the brunt of that mm -hmm. and it this was a great opportunity to see her grow and embrace 
her just natural skill sets of being able to help people. And I think that's what's nice um, about, there's all sorts of different companies out there, but for us with it being so focused on health, of being able to actually know that you're making a difference in people's lives, seeing those benefits, but then also there's a business element to it and being able to see, help other people kind of have that same financial help and success to kind of get them out of those same situations that we were in. And so that's another piece where I feel so thankful for how raw we were financially because man, like it just brings me so much joy to help other people. And I get it. Right. It's like when I know, like, I'm like, I get what it's like. I get what it's like to have to like, we I mean, we sold your truck to pay for when we were trying to sell our house and everything. Like we had no money. And so I like, it's my mission. Like I'll never stop because if my, it's not even about the money. Like if my, if I stop growing my income in a sense, I'm actually capping other people. I'm stopping other people from having that same thing. And that's so selfish. And so like, regardless, like I'm just, I love what I do. I love helping other people. And so I'll just never stop doing what I do. You know, it's a passion. And I think you highlight something that I think often gets overlooked like generally, and I'm going to speak from what I hear or think is like a stereotypical of network marketing, not necessarily your experience, Yeah. but you know, someone's going to do network marketing and there's sort of this bad rap about it and I'm going to sell and make lots of money maybe. Mm -hmm. And kind of with that, there's like, well, theoretically, I, you know, your average earner makes this, but uh, I actually don't know anyone that's done that mm -hmm. and it's easy to give up, but it becomes kind of focused on the money and as you said you have kind of a neat opportunity in the network marketing space to not just help people with the products that you sell yeah. but help money. develop other business owners help develop other ladies and guys into yeah leaders absolutely like i've helped people you know single moms i've helped women on disability we have pastors actually in the dominican republic and there's just so many people where it's just, it's been a huge blessing. I always tell my team to stop chasing points and just start chasing people. And by chasing people, it's not saying, Hey girl, <laughs> you know, it's serving. It's like coming from a service focus and people can feel the difference mm -hmm. when you're there to serve them 100%. and when you're there to take. I think that's something that's changed for me significantly is that understanding of really the potential that network marketing can have mm -hmm. because I was the same way when you when she wanted to do this, I was like, okay, that's great. This gives you something <laughs> to so, do. So, so um, supportive. Skeptical. If it makes you happy, then great. Um, but you do, you don't, there's a lot of times where you don't hear um, people having mm -hmm. significant success. Um, Sustainable success. It, you it, might see people make yeah. quick bonuses or they might, but that sustainable success is so rare. Yeah. And so the ability to actually have a company where, you know, you're not just selling the product, you're not just there to make money, but you're actually offering products that ideally <laughs> that you believe in, that you you like mm -hmm. and that you feel are, are beneficial. But then you're also giving people an opportunity to make money as well, which yeah. is unique when you're running your own business, things like that. You're focused on selling the product. You're not, it's there, you're providing a great service, but you're not giving them an opportunity necessarily to make money off of that and kind of join with that. Yeah. So it's been really great to, to see that opportunity because a lot of people don't necessarily have that experience to get into business or have, you know, when it comes to product development, things like that, but network marketing gives them an opportunity to kind of come in with all that figured out. And now you're actually working more on just customer relationships. Such an underlooked industry that people don't even give a chance. And I mean, look into your companies. Like I'm not throwing any name, but just really like look into the company because they're not all equal. And so I've seen people hustle in other companies and kill themselves. And then they come to Flexus and they're like, wow, like this is so much easier. They set you up to actually win. And so it's like, just do your homework, I guess. And I would say I got, this is actually my only network marketing company I've got done. I've never done anything else. Um, and it just goes to show, like, if you're passionate, like you can go quick without, I mean, I have 500 Facebook friends, which it's not like low, but it's also not like I was an influencer. Um, but yeah, it's just do your homework too, with what 
what company, like, and you have to be passionate about the products. Like Brandon said, I've got my health and life coaching certification. I'm a background in nursing. I love helping people feel better. And so that's a passion for me. So you got to align with that too. I mean, if you don't wear makeup, maybe don't, don't go sell lipstick. <laughs> That reminds me of a story that I'm probably not going to share on this okay. podcast. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you after we're done. Okay. Um, what would you say to somebody who thinks of network marketing as great for someone who has a extrovert or outgoing personality, but someone who is introverted and doesn't like people or doesn't like talking to people or doesn't uh-huh. think they can sell anything? Obviously, that's I'm not meant to do that. That's for uh-huh. other people. What? How do you kind of counter that? I'm an introvert. <laughs> actually an extroverted introvert. Um, and so I've actually loved this because I don't have to leave my house. (laughs) Like I don't have to go out and be with people in person. I get to choose like, so it actually is amazing for introverts. And I think what speaks to, at least for our company, um, when I go to like six figure retreats and stuff like that, there's like 70 year olds, there's 18 year olds, there are introverts, there's extroverts, there's men, there's what you see literally all the things all and i think the thing is you work in your strength and and i'm so thankful to have people on my team that are very different from me because they have different strengths like like, when we talked about with me and brandon very different strengths and so stop trying to be something you're not don't try and be an extrovert use the strengths and talents you have and use that like dig into that don't run away from that and i think that's that's one of the biggest things i see is people even my mom, she'd probably be a good example. She doesn't do much with Plexus anymore, but, but she did. And she's like, Amanda, I, you know, <laughs> I could never be you. And I was like, please don't. <laughs> um, and so where I really saw when, when she was working the business, things turned for her. She started digging into her like quiet strength that she has, like her own self, like her own skills that she carried and things just boomed because she was authentic. And so, you know, when you're authentic and you're yourself and you have passion for it, it doesn't matter if you're introverted. It's an amazing industry for introverts. I love it. I don't have to leave my house. Well, so many people think of, (laughs) especially now as social media has become so big, Mm -hmm. people think of like an influencer model. That's the only way you can make money is if you have all these followers, you have all these things. Like you said, you had 500 people at the beginning. Yeah. That... The people that she worked with originally and signed up, she didn't know them. She was able to just network and connect with them. And, uh, and so it's not that you have to be out in front of everybody, to be honest. We've worked with even a few people who have had huge followings, thinking, oh, this is going to be great. They're going to be super successful. And they don't make And it they work. don't. And it's because they're, that, you can't rely on that. Connection. If you're not connecting with people, you have nothing. You need to be able to connect with people and serve them. Well, and as you said earlier, it can't be a, like an artificial, superficial relationship mm-hmm. or product pitch. Mm-hmm. This is about a like sustainable relationships. Yeah, built up relationships, hundred percent. How does someone get started in network marketing? If they're like, okay, well, I'm hearing Amanda, and she looks like she's on top of the world and loving life and whatever. I'd like to get into that, and maybe not just Plexus, although maybe that's yeah. all you can speak to, but. How does, what's the first steps that someone would take if they want to get involved in that kind of business? The thing I want to say is just be aligned with who you're getting started with. Like you're doing business with them, right? And so I think that's huge. Like a lot of the people that I get started with, we've got that relationship and we've got that rapport. I mean, you don't need to have that to be successful either, but it makes a difference having that rapport with somebody and somebody that you trust to like walk that journey with you. Because I mean, and you'll see it in network marketing, in any industry really right like where there's those people and they're like they'll sign you up and then you're like where where'd sally go <laughs> like i thought she was gonna help me with this <laughs> and that's the biggest thing for me that i do when i get people started is i i'm really their partner in this like i'm here to help them and serve them and i get on a coach a coaching call with them and and really dig into things with them but i also don't overwhelm like okay <laughs> Here's like the playbook, you know, it's like spoon feeding, like, okay, we're going to start with this and we're going to layer on this. Like, so it makes a difference who you get started with for sure. It's one of the most unique pieces of network marketing. You get to choose your own boss. Yes. And you get to do, you get to flip things and you get to be the interviewer. But you're your own boss. I need to highlight that. Yeah. Like, you're your own boss. You work with somebody. You get to choose who you work with. But exactly. You don't have some, a boss who's going to um, just 
interview all you and hire you. You get to go and see, you know, who do I want to work with? Who do you want to work with? Because the person who's bringing you into the company, they're the ones who's going to take on that primary, um, typical, traditional kind of management role. They're the ones who are going to be training you on how to use the products more. They're going to be how to um, utilize your skill sets, your strengths, and how you can kind of build a duplicatable business and grow. So you can just sign up with anybody, but that's... And it becomes kind of such a community. A and I know it's so cliche and, you know, people post, oh, come be a part of my community. And I used to be like, oh, because I, I mean, I, I'll talk about how I felt about network marketing. Um, but I was talking to my mom or you, I can't remember. And that like, truly my business partners are some of my closest, best friends. Mm-hmm. It is so tight knit. Like we had a, a girl and her mom unfortunately passed away. And, you know, we all threw in money and we, we sent her a flower delivery, like things like that. It's like, or the other day, right? I so I sprained my ankle a couple, you know, probably a month ago, and I went to the post office, and there was just parts sitting in the post office. Hey, I hope you're doing okay. I was worried about you. Mm-hmm. I was sending you happy mail, and it's like, I'm so thankful, and it's just hard to imagine. Like, I mean, the girl that had the the mom pass away, she's in New Mexico, I and like, and then Tammy, like, she's in Dominican Republic, like. I just thank God that I had network marketing to meet these people. Cause I'm like, there's no way I would have met these friends across the world, you know? And it's, inter- it's kind of unique in the sense that I don't actually meet them in person usually until we're in the Bahamas <laughs> or for like, I can, and it's, it's the, the neatest experience to like meet them in person for the first time. It's so special. You, you've kind of alluded to it. And if you can't think of any, I am putting you on the spot, but are there, is there like an experience or two that it kind of stand out so far as like your some of your more cherished memories? And you don't have to use names or anything, but just like, do you have a story or two you could share about some of like your most favorite cherished memories so far in this journey? That's like a deep question. I want, I'm like, I want to pick. Do you have one you want to start or can you think of one to? There's so, there's so, there's many, so many, but like, I, I, uh, she talked about uh, the pastors from Dominican. I was thinking she, of them too. She just she met them online in a vendor online vendor event. Got in touch with the wife and kind of connected. And it was probably what a year before we met them in person. Six months. It was only six months. They oh that's right. Mm-hmm. They um sh- they were on. They're from the states, but they are in the Dominican, and yeah, it just so happened that. They signed up, she signed, the, the wife signed up, and then, what, two weeks two later? Two weeks later, they announced the trip in Dominican Republic. Five <laughs> hours, five the, hours. They'll have different, every quarter, they have different They've uh, never went international, in ever, ever in the history of Plexus. And I was like, if this isn't your sign. <laughs> and so she was able to work hard. She earned it. Yeah. And so her and her husband were able to just drive there. And so we were able to actually meet them in that person. so special. In their home country. And, uh, and be able to work with them, talk with them. And now then they were, they came to our convention that took place in Las Vegas this year. And we were able to sit down and strategize with them, just seeing how they're kind of in a similar situation to us where, you know what, both husband and wife are, you know what, this is a great opportunity. How can we work together? And so we're starting to be able to work with them, um, trying to help, help them continue to grow with that. And then bless, it blesses their lives and then helps them bless. It's a different way they view ministry work. They, they said it's another form of ministry, helping people with their health and finances. And um, probably like now that I'm just thinking more, when I spoke on stage in Toronto, that was huge. Like I've always, I love speaking. I, I just, I don't know. It's always been a passion, just something like Which is weird when you call yourself an introvert. I know, but I love, I think what I love about it and what I know I love about it is, and I did it until I actually did it. It was like, wow, to be able to make an impact in on that many people at once was like mind blowing to me. And, um, I guess should I tell this story that Lindsay sent me? So I'd been asked to do this. It wasn't public at all yet. So no one knew about it. And my friend messaged messaged me and he wasn't Emerald yet. That's like one of the top ranks. So I was really trying to get him there. And she messaged me and she said, Amanda, I had a dream the other day that you got announced as a double jewel family on stage. I was like, you did? She's like, yeah. I was like, well, where? This is so cool, Lindsay. She's like, it was on stage at Gold School. 
So if you get asked to speak, you're totally like going double jewel this month. And at the time, I mean, we had to double your business that month. We there It was not like the stars were not aligning for that. But when I got that, I got chills from my head to my toe. And that's what got him emerald. Like you'd think the money or all this, right? That would have pushed me to just pull the trigger and get it done. We weren't, it's not like it was set up to look like it would head that way. But when I got that message, it became a calling for me and an assignment that like, this needs to happen. There's somebody, I truly felt, my God, that there's somebody, at least even one person in that room when I speak, that needs to hear what I have to say. And it's going to change their life. And I, I knew that, like I could just feel it through my body. And so that is what like pushed me. It was, it was a push <laughs> to get him there because I knew the impact it was going to have. And when I spoke on stage, I shared that story. There was not a dry eye in that room. <laughs> and I had somebody in mind, I won't say their name, but they were at least one of those people. And there's more than one that needed to hear the message I said. And something I said and alluded to when I spoke was not anywhere anywhere in my notes it was I, it just it just came to me and it was something and that was what made the most impact and so that was huge for me like in my business just to to see the difference it made on so many people and that's what I'm passionate about is making an impact like making an impact produces the income now in the time we've been talking and I'm sure it'll come up multiple times again you've used the word or some variation of the phrase you're, thank, you're so thankful. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned God and I know your faith is important to you. How has your faith played a role if it has in what you do and why? Oh, huge, huge. Like, because I do feel like it's a calling. I feel like it's something I've been, I feel like I went through what I did financially because God has prepared for me to do. And when I have those experiences, like I just shared, you can't make that crap up, <laughs> you know, you just can't make that crap up. Um, and it was really special. I ended up, it happened on Easter day, actually the day you went Emerald. I mean, March 31st typically is not Easter. It's very rare. And that was my grandma's favorite holiday and she's since passed. And, and it was just really special. Um, and interestingly, I've just attracted a lot of people with strong faith. And so it's made a difference. I see a huge difference in people, not like you have to have faith, but it just, it helps you withstand things. It helps you have something deeper to go past that. Um, I think we talked a bit about my dream board and what was interesting is when I spoke, so I made my dream board and, and the word impact just kept coming to my mind. And so the top of it said impact. And then I put quit job, which was for you, double emerald speak. And, and I sat back and I looked at it and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> so I wasn't even thinking of the word impact. And I kept, I wanted to use an acronym when I trained. It felt like, it just felt more cool. <laughs> I felt like it would carry more weight. Like I need to like, be, like have an acronym. And so I had my principles and I was trying to figure out, okay, what acronym would work with this? Like I need to share this stuff. What can I, nothing was coming. Nothing was coming. Like it was like, ugh. and then I was just sitting there, not even thinking about it anymore. I just let it go. And the word impact just like came in my head. I was like, it's impact. And I was like, holy crap, it all fits. Like everything <laughs> juggled. And then I was like, that's on my dream board. <laughs> like what? So yeah, no, faith has been a huge piece. And my faith has been increased doing this because I've just seen God's hand and just miracle after miracle after miracle in my business. You just, there's been so many experiences where God has just shown up. Anything you'd add to that, Brandon? I, I don't know if there's much to that other than it is. It's just in our daily lives. There's just one thing after another that just it always increases your faith and just knows that uh, he definitely has a hand in, in our lives. And so it definitely plays a, a very strong role in our day-to-day -day well, life, but our business. When we know we're aligned with him, it just gives me peace, like so much peace that like it's, it, it's all going to work out and it has, it, it all works out. Because when you align yourself with God, it works out. There's no way for it not to when you align yourself with that. And and he can use you to impact people how um, he needs it to be. That's done. what I was going to say is it's not just that you feel like you're doing what you're supposed to do, but you have an mm -hmm. opportunity to play a cool role in helping other people get to where they're supposed to. Yeah, be. It, it does. It feels like a calling, honestly. Now, Brandon, I'm curious when... Uh, depending on the network marketing company I choose, but the ones that come to mind, uh, 
Mary Kay, Avon, Tupperware, Party Light, Monaid. I I tend to think like stereotypically those being girls, like a female that <laughs> a would pink chase. Drink. I'm like this is main products a pink drink. <laughs> yeah. Being a guy in this uh, industry, and particularly with this company, um, what would you say to people who are like, oh, that's that's for girls? Well, it, it, that's something that even our company is still working to address <laughs> because it is it's it's drink pink it's known as the pink drink company um everything is branded pink our most recent product that they launched is iron woman in a pink, <laughs> pink bottle. um it's an iron something it's like here to war exactly <laughs> so a lot of the industries are they're geared towards women and to be honest i think a lot of it not necessarily that it's some products, some companies um, are going to be geared towards that, but it's actually been more of a, just how things have grown over time from how the, a lot of these businesses started. Um, a lot of them were geared towards stay-at-home moms. Mm. And that, um, a lot of the reasons why these companies um, go the way that they do is it's, it's attractive to somebody who has that focus of, you know, I want to work for home. I want to kind of have that flexibility and independence. Um, and they don't want to necessarily go out of the home to get that. And so these businesses went, they did all of the corporate side of things. They develop products, they do the research, they do a lot of the marketing, um, all that. And then they say, Hey, who wants to come and do this with us? And so those industries were dominated by women for the longest time more because of that. Um, as time's gone on, it's still something that's not as common. There's not a whole lot of guys who are top and successful in our company. Um, you look at a lot of them um, when they're double jewels. So in our case, so she started and as we went on, I kind of signed up under her. And she's up until now, she was primarily the one who was building my leg and doing the work under me. And so there's a lot of people who are they're just there for the ride with their spouse. <laughs> but coming from the corporate sector as, as a former executive running companies, like I see the potential and I see it's something that actually excites me that, you know what, there is a lot of, this is a very, if you want to be, do business, but you don't necessarily have that, um, desire or experience to create a product, which frankly, that's always been me. That's why I started off business consulting <laughs> because I loved going fixing and things. fixing problems, getting businesses set up, doing that, but I wasn't creative enough to create that next big thing. So this was an, this is an opportunity to take a proven product and then actually go and focus on the marketing side of things, the customer relationship side of things. So the tools are there. Now I get to just use my experience to work with other people to develop that. And even then in our company, it is primarily women. They're starting to do more. There's been lots of feedback. Hey, you know what? You are missing out on it because we're gut, it's gut health. And when you go, it's a new, it's just now kind of starting to become a hot topic and that, but gut health is far more than just women. <laughs> and I, I, even myself, you know what, even when I started, I didn't care. It's pink <laughs> drink. It wasn't great. I took it because she said, it. you take it. And that, but even for me, like my health, it, it made a huge impact on me and that with, uh, working on kind of improving my gut and that because I had a lot of stomach issues. He's celiac and, that, and he had reflux. I, I had acid reflux that I but even we were with the kids with the other night. He's like, I think there was cookie dough in that balloon. Like, <laughs> he used to throw up. Like he couldn't touch balloons. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's made and a that's huge gone difference. away. It's it's definitely gotten better. I'm, we're I'm gonna still, retest soon. Just to... their um, celiac disease is autoimmune. So if it is, if I had that, then there really isn't anything that can cure that. However, um, because gut health has been such a new topic, there still is not a lot of research, and so. The, the test that they, one of the main tests they do for it is a blood test and it's kind of tech, detecting um, antigen. An, the antigen and the stuff like that. So, um, but there's other different things like leaky gut and that. Where yeah, it so can if it's genetic, you can thing. never get rid of it because it's a genetic mutation. But when it when it's more of a leaky gut autoimmune thing going on, I have had people, I mean, we can't claim certain things, but now they can eat it. So, <laughs> but it's really helped him a lot with his health and... Yeah, 
been a huge blessing for sure. So there is lots of opportunities for, for men to get in. It's just not something that it's thought of. It's thought of primarily as a Good women's on. company because that's just how it's always been. I'm guessing you're quite happy to show the way on how it can be a guy's <laughs> thing too. It can be. Yeah. Um, one of the common objections or obstacles that I hear people think about, I don't know if it's reality or just fear, but I get into a network marketing business and... I very quickly exhaust my local circle of family and friends. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, now oh what? crap, now what? That was my first question. So like I said, well, I don't think I've gotten into this actually. Um, before I started, I, I, I didn't bash people doing it, but it was like, that's not for me. <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm not going to go to my friends and sell lipstick. And then they make like $20 and then, you know, host party. I was like, I'm, I'm out, you know, I'm, I'm really out. And, um, and so I got started with this because I did see how it was quite different. Um, I don't know how much you want to go need to go into that. But so when I was looking at it, my first, I guess, objection, right, was like, sounds great. But what do I do when I run out of people? Because this is what happens. Like, and so at that moment, I was like, Amanda, you're just we're never going to have that problem. We're never going to run out of people. And so I've grown from 500 Facebook friends to 6,000 and I actually get paid for ads now. Um, and it, I did do it during COVID too. So there's no other way. It had to be on social media. And so I've done a lot of networking, um, mostly through Facebook, actually not really at all on Instagram. Don't follow me on Instagram. <laughs> not really on there, but I networked. And so like, it's just like I was saying earlier, like the name of the industry is network marketing. And and I mean, even in my own team where I see like probably the biggest piece where people might start struggling is they're not networking with new people or not developing relationships with new people and you will run out. And so, yeah, I spent a lot of time networking with with people across the world and building those relationships first. And and it's really neat because they connect you to people who connect you to people who connect you to people. And I was like, I have the coolest, weirdest job ever. <laughs> like I was on the phone the other day with this lady in New Mexico. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, I met this lady from South Carolina who connected me to this New Mexico lady who had this friend who had like, it was like crazy town. And normally I don't go that deep, but no one else could help. So I was on the phone with this lady. And I was like, this is so freaking cool. <laughs> that I'm even talking to you. I'm in Canada you're there. And so they really open up their networks too. And so it's networking, but then you're able to tap into their network and it's a brilliant model. I just don't feel like people see the potential in it or use it enough. Um, and a big piece I wanted to mention too, that was big for me was the residual income, because if you're selling say tub or like I'm not, but anything that's not consumable, that to me is just not sustainability. Like I want to have something that's consumable that people are loving. They're coming back for, because I mean, I'm always working my business, but I have such a strong base of consumers that like we can rely on. I mean, you're going to keep on it. They love it. Right. And so I love that it's consumable. I even, my one friend, when the mom was passing away, she stopped, you know, working her business. And when she was looking at getting back into it, after she went through that, she was like, Amanda, this is crazy. <laughs> She's like, I got paid. Like what? Like she just, and what a blessing though. What a blessing when things come up. I just think of so many people go through so many things in this life and they have to worry about getting compensated for work or all the things, right? Maybe they end up with cancer and there's so many things that can happen. And so it's just such a blessing to have that residual income that if something were to happen, you've got something going on. And I, it's, it's not even, it used to be a luxury having residual income or having another stream of income, I should say. And to me, it's a necessity in this world. There is, if you're not finding another stream of income, it doesn't have to be network marketing. I think it's dumb. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. I mean, inflation rates are crazy. I just think it's just wise to have multiple streams of income. Um, with any business, really, that's kind of your, your goal eventually is, you know, you want to be able to earn money without actually physically doing, doing the it. work. Yeah. And you have that opportunity, provided you actually work it like a business. When you hear all the people who talk about it, they hear, oh, it's so easy. You can make all this money. It, it's not easy. It's not. It's not. If it is easy. It's, it's a scam. <laughs> it's, chances are it's not going to last long. 
And that's where people do. They go and they get excited. They post on Facebook or something like that. And they get the easy comments coming in. They make sales. Work. And then it's it. They run out. Well, if any, you have to do some sort of marketing. Marketing is the lifeblood of any business. Mm -hmm. So, yes, maybe the company has spent a lot of money doing um, developing ads, developing uh, marketing materials, but you still have to go out and utilize those as uh, independent business um, ambassador. So if you're not going out and advertising and doing it, it doesn't mean just throwing, you're not, it's not just a poster board on your Facebook. Nobody wants that. Mm -hmm. You, any business has to be developing and providing some sort of uh, benefit and value to people to be, Giving for, them to, for them to want to engage with you. And so you have to actually go out and make connections with people. If all you had to do was slap uh, an advertisement on a website. Anybody could do it. Exactly. Anybody could do it. Anybody would. And frankly, if it was that easy, businesses wouldn't do a network marketing model. <laughs> a main reason that they do it is because oftentimes the products that they're selling, they require that human connection to be able to help explain what those products are. For us specifically, when you're looking at a health product, it wouldn't go very well to just put it on a shelf. You want somebody you can work with and talk through, you know what, there's so many different products that are going to affect different people and kind of based on what their unique health goals are. And by having that one-on-one -on -one connection, it provides a lot greater value to that customer. You're not going to get that from a Walmart associate. And so <laughs> no it, it makes sense for them to go and, you know what, let's hire out these independent contractors. Let's pay them to do the marketing and compensate them so that they can go and actually work with I think people. that's also a huge piece of maybe my success would be, I've seen this a lot, where they're like, oh, I got a, a sign up. I don't know why I hate that word, but like I got somebody started would be what I'd say. Um, and then, so they like, they're just, they're constantly like, there's a hole in their bucket and they're signing people and then they're quitting it. And they're not even, it's like, that's the easy part. I mean, yes and no, but it's like, at that point, that's where I'm like, I'm in this with you. And I, I like check in on people, you know, send order reminders. Like, how are you doing? Here's your dosages. Have you seen this? Like I pour into them because I want them to love the products. I want them to get results. Right. And that's going to create sustainability because there's people in any company, and I've even seen it in Plexus, and it's not a company, I don't want to say problem, it's it's more of a person problem, where they're just chasing the next sale, another hit, and it's like, look, like, take care of their person, like, take care of them well. And so that's something I really take a lot of um, ownership in, is like, like, I'm here to help people, and I don't want them to just start and be, like, left abandoned and not have the support. So that's a huge thing for me. Fair. Um, what are some of the more common objections you guys see and how do you kind of overcome them? Why are you laughing? Well, I think the biggest one that comes to mind always is that it's a scam. That's from the pyramid center. scheme. Pyramid <laughs> schemes and things like that. And it it really tarnishes the network marketing industry. Yeah. And that and frankly, you know what, there was years and years ago, and that there were companies that they weren't built um, properly and they were they did affect people very negatively because of that now there is extensive regulations and things like that that are in place um, a lot of there's a huge list of what you can and can't say and that to really try to protect consumers from that so a lot of that type of thing has gone away but even still there's still businesses and that's why it's so important if you are looking to do it is to look at structure some they're very focused on you signing up other people. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the focus, that becomes a real challenge. You're not, now you're not just delivering a product. Your focus is on whether or not you can recruit other people to do it. And that's where it can get to feel a little slimy. It's like I always okay. say, it's like those gambling, mach not gambling machines. You know, those like your kids trying to get those stuffed animals. That thing. Claw the claw machines. Claw machines. Yeah. Yes. We're like, they're like, man, and it just misses it. And so that's what I love about Plexus. They say that they do network marketing the way it could be done, should be done, but rarely ever is done. We've actually been voted the top for ethics multiple times in the whole industry. And it speaks volumes to like, they design things for new people to win. And I think I would have a hard time representing a company where deep down I knew when I got a new business partner started that they didn't have a chance. That doesn't feel good. 
Like I went live the other day. This was this cruise. I'm like 11 customers you during this cruise. I'm like, guys, this is crazy. Like I was like, <laughs> like in my phone, but like 70% that are in that trip are not jewels like me. And I love that. I love that they, they reward people for the work that they do and they actually pay them well. It feels good to actually make a difference. And I think that's the thing is like other ones, right? You, they end up spending more money than they're actually making. Like there's just so much and it still goes on today. I mean, it just does. And so for me, this is just, it's been a blessing to align with a company that doesn't do those, those things. And, and, and it, you know, you'll still get those people. I mean, in any company, probably even in Fluxus too, that are sending those yucky messages. And anytime I get one, I'm like, I get upset. I don't, not to the person. I'm just like, Brandon, this is the people ruining the industry. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to like, I just, I, I'm nice. Cause I know how tough it is out there. Maybe that's how they were trained. I don't know. Probably. But I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> that's just it. There's enough businesses nowadays that when you actually look at their structures and their models, you know, it's more of an actual commission structure. Yeah. Like for this, you know, you could be very successful with Plexus if all you did was sign people up. Yeah, customers even. You, you get paid for your commissions. Mm -hmm. It really is your commission salesperson. You just have that opportunity that you can also make money by you recruiting people or. to do the business. And people say, well, okay, well, why are you doing that? Well, why? You Essentially, you are that person's manager now. So you're making money. You're, this company's incentivizing you to take that person under your wing, mentor them, train them. So they're compensating you for your time on that, but then giving you that opportunity to kind of expand your income. So it really comes down to just looking at, you know what, if that's your concern, it's a scam, it's whatever, well, look at the compensation plan. I think look a scam is people working for like 50, 60 years and barely getting a raise. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. I, I saw this quote somewhere and it was like, you know, people work 40 years broke and like, you know what I mean? And then they won't even give. I mean, like you were before we started this, you're saying like it's a high turnover and people try it out for like, I mean, you started up chill. Like, you know, the work it takes to start a business up. <laughs> and so like people try it out and it's like, so people give 40 plus years to, to like the same base income working like 40, 60 hours a week, exhausted and depleted. But then like, why won't you give even four or five years to something like this where you have uncapped income? It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would you not put more skin in the game yeah. for what you're going to get out of it? It just still boggles my mind a little bit, you know? Well, this is kind of a broad question, um, but... Maybe I'll invite each of you to think if there's at least one thing that comes to mind. What would you suggest has been kind of a key success factor for you or maybe asked a different way? What are some of the best practices or tips that you've kind of noted along the way that have helped you guys get to where you are? I've kind of alluded to some, of, well, a huge piece of it is that connection piece is huge. Mm -hmm. Connecting, um, but also the relation, like connecting in relationships is being huge and, and coming from a service focus. So like doing order reminders, connecting with them, that's been huge, but also my passion because I, I don't know if you all can tell you, I'm pretty <laughs> passionate about what I do. And so that's the backbone of it. Like I have high energy and passion by energy. It's not necessarily like, like, you know what I mean? But it's just that energy, that excitement for what you're doing and for the people you're helping. It's contagious. When I did this in 12 months, I had no network marketing experience. I mean, I, I didn't, I had four kids under seven. I didn't have, if you looked at what I had going on, you'd be like, good luck with that. <laughs> like, seriously, like, hope that works out for you. But I was so passionate. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, let's do this. And people were like excited about it. And so I worked hard, but I was also so excited and I cared about people. And so for me, part of like a huge piece of my success is that ability to connect with people and serve them, but also having some energy and excitement. I can give my team all my resources, all my systems, all my things that I've developed over the last four years. But if they don't have that same energy, it's transferable. You transfer it, you like smudge it onto people, right? Like when you lick an ice cream, you got a blue tongue, like you're smudging your energy. I was at a conference, I've done a lot of self-development and he said, it's cool. I didn't know this, but when you go to sit in a room, you pick up, it's actually, they proved this. You pick up the energy of the person that's sitting in that chair into your body. It's like literally transferable. 
And so it matters. It just, it does. And so he actually, he went as far as saying, I didn't have time today, but if I would have, usually I sit down in every chair before the, <laughs> before I start so I can bring good energy in here. You start doing that. I think. <laughs> yeah. So for me, that's been huge. We have very different things. That, I don't, that is probably one of the biggest pieces for sure is that connection piece and, that, and bringing that energy I feel the thing that goes hand in hand with it is treating it like a business mm -hmm. and I see that Owning all the it. time um I it's a good point honey. I think one of the biggest things I probably the best way to think of a network marketing company is it's almost like a franchise where you have now bought into this business they have done the groundwork but you can't just sit there and do nothing. You have to actually go out now and market that business. Mm -hmm. um, you have lots of potential there, but it, you can't just expect to post on Facebook one or two times and have a booming, successful business. It's hard work. Um, and if somebody is telling you it's not going to be hard work, then probably it's a scam. It is a scam. You know what? If it when people say, "Well, it's it's too good to be true," well, you know what? It probably is. If you listened and heard some of the things, like we're very we're very blessed. And that being at the top of the company, um, we do, we go on multiple trips. We're going, um, they're paying for us to go to Maui. Um, but the amount of, was that easy? <laughs> Every year we get to go on these trips, but it's not easy by any stretch. I think it's a lot of work. Well, you're saying that pivoting, the word comes to my mind and, and I'm sure you relate to a lot of that, you know, whether it be, I don't care, network marketing, uh, brick and mortar pivoting. We started in COVID. We're in a totally different season. And so being able to pivot, is this still working? I do that all the time. I do business assessments. I'm like, how's that working? Is that still working? Maybe we should. And it's not like 180, like doing a 360 and they're like, what's happening now? But it's just really taking that. And, and I'm sure you do the same. Is this still working? Do we need to shift this? Do yeah. we need to pivot that? And then when crap gets hard, because like, I mean, we've had seasons in our business where I'm like, well, what's going on? <laughs> you know, that you know why you're doing it, you stick with it and you stay consistent through all the seasons. That's so important because I see a lot of times that as soon as anything gets hard and I know like I, I've listened to some of your podcasts, when things get hard, it's easier to walk. But I don't think it is. I think it's easier to stay with what you're doing and way harder walking away long term. Maybe like for a day it feels better, but it's easier to stick it out and be consistent and stick it through than walking away when things get hard. And that's just like any business. It's hard. You have to continue. Anything worth adapt it is you work. stick with it, right? Yeah. Well, and the industry itself even is changing. When you listen to um, the CEO of the company and that, and their chief marketing officers talk and that, they're they're looking at the industry as a whole and saying, "Yeah, you know what? Ever since COVID, business is changing, <laughs> and we need to be like we need to be doing that. We can't just keep sticking." Um, to the same practices. They're so good at that. And they're really pushing and trying to help mm -hmm. people understand, you know, these we need to start making more changes. We need to move to that digital, that digital space more and more. So any business, it's not going to be easy. You have to be willing to continually work at it, put in effort in order to be successful, or otherwise it's not gonna I mean, and when we flop. started, our kids were they all have ADHD. Our oldest has autism, and they're two, three, five, and seven. That's that's how old they were when we started. He was still in school full time, working. I was actually in school doing thirty hour a week research papers, which was crazy. And so it's not like and it was during summer holidays. It, it wasn't ideal situations at all. Um, but I just was like, the reason why my excuse was actually the reason why I needed to do it. Mm -hmm exactly what I needed to do it like his hours I could have been like but no the fact he's working this is why I need to do this the fact that you know is why I need to do this and that's what I just come back to I just dug into that like I can either keep living this life for the next x amount of years or I can change it and so it became harder actually we're just getting out of that now it became harder before it was easier way harder it would have been easier short term right because now we're just adding another thing into the pot that we're doing here. Um, and that can be hard. It, there was moments where I was like, is this worth it? You know, I second guessed myself. It's like, is there an end to this? And he, he got out finally in March. 
But it was like, man, and he's like, just keep, just stay focused. And so it's not that you don't have those moments. You just don't stay there. Yeah. How many businesses, how, how many business successes have you really heard where that hasn't been their story? There's always been some big thing. They've Break had, down the hard breakthrough. They've right? had to really work. Um, I, I always, that makes them all up because you listen to so many different, <laughs> different people. I think it was Damon John, though, who, who talks about uh, the power of broke. Um, and he talked about, like, you know what? Go practice. Go Before you want to start a business, go and just live off of rice for months at a time beforehand to see, can you cut it as a business owner? And that because you know what? It, there's going to be times that are tough. And if you're not ready for that, if you don't actually have to go into things with the understanding that I am going to have to work hard to be successful, you don't get to that end goal. People always see, actually, John Maxwell came to a convent, our convention uh, two years ago. And he said, the question he always gets is people come and they ask him, oh, I, lo I want to, I love this. I want to do what you do. He said, okay, you want to do this? Are you willing to actually do the work? Do to get I to did. this point. John Maxwell says yeah. that too. Then are you going to do the do? Like, yeah. Are you going to do the work to get to this point? That's great. Everybody wants to sit on a stage <laughs> and speak in front of tons of people. But are you willing to actually do the work to get to that point where and, and most And have aren't. some skin in the game. I mean, like I'm not going to undermine. I've spent thousands of dollars in personal development. I've gotten in the room with seven figure earners. That's who I want. I want to become like I want to be in yeah. the room. And so I've invested in myself. And so it's not even just business. Like my personal growth is like skyrocketed. I'm not who I was when I started this at all. I would say like, it's, you get compensated. Like it's a personal growth journey with a compensation plan. And so I've dug in. I mean, I put out thousands of dollars into self-development. You know what? Could we have like kept that? Yeah. But to me, it's my ROI on that, my return of investment. I'm putting that in, I'm getting this back. And so I continue to do that. You're never done growing. And so I just, I like to get in the room with the people every January, I go to a conference and it's also helped me develop. I feel like there's a huge piece of when I spoke in Ontario, um, in Toronto this year, just being at so many different conferences and soaking so much up. I felt like I had more that I could give back and more value that I could give to. If you're current self could go back in time four or five years and speak to your four or five year old ago self what would you what do you think you'd tell yourself people's opinions don't pay your bills i mean okay guys like when i said i didn't think i even touched on that piece my anxiety was through the roof when i started this like listen i would post a health story and i'd go to my 566 facebook friends list and if i lost a facebook friend within that day i would i'm not kidding you i did this I'd scroll through I'm like who did I lose <laughs> like who who did I lose <laughs> and I get like really stressed about it I like I'd like send a message and I'd archive it I'm like I don't want to know if they didn't say anything I was super anxious and what kept me going though was I it wasn't like I told you things were hard I wanted to change things for my family and the people that actually mattered wouldn't care and the people that fell off don't matter anyway and so that's what kept me going with it. So I just go back and yeah, like they don't pay your bill and just stick with it when things get hard. You know, it works out when you s just keep being consistent, like it will work out. So. Brad, anything you'd add? I, uh, for me, I would have just said to, to actually go in all in that <laughs> instead of waiting. You Re Three years. He, two, he two was, years. you didn't talk about that enough. He was so skeptical. Well, yeah. I was making, I brought in thousands of dollars at this point. I think I was six months in, I got into a bonus pool they did in the country and I was like, it was a huge check. And he was still like, yeah, I mean, they do a lot of front loaded bonuses. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, babe, when you quit your job at the end of the year, when I go diamond, he's like, whoa. And we actually had a bit of a like, a thing there I was like I'm trying to reduce your stress and I'm trying to help you and you don't want that like it's, it was this thing where I was like trying to help him because he's a huge piece of my why I just couldn't watch it anymore and he's like whoa no this is my dream job so it's kind of this like a little bit of like we, we didn't like argue about it it's just kind of like we were not aligned at all with what I was doing it took you like how long honey like it wasn't right away it was at least a year Maybe when I went more, Emerald, more even that. maybe longer more than, than that. that. Because it took a while for me to even 
to leave the products because I just took them because she told me. <laughs> yeah. um, it wasn't until well over a year I um, I got sick and just out of routine, and so I stopped taking them. And then realized all of a sudden, oh wait a minute, my acid reflux is back. I don't feel good here, and I started them again. And realized, wait a minute, and now it's gone. Um, so I started to see the health benefits of it, and then yeah, I started to see, you know what. There is potential here. We uh, got to go on some of the trips and meet with the CEO of the company and stuff and see how things were being run and started to really look at things like, you know what, it's not anything I would have thought of. So I guess to say to that is if you have somebody that you're like, well, my mom wouldn't support this. My husband's, you know, against that. My family wouldn't support that. I tell you to just show them because I had that too. Like, I'm not going to name names, but I have a few. They're kind of like, okay, like, good luck with that. You know, I like, not like in a rude way. They're just kind of like, people don't do good at that. Like they, they really believe that. And I was like, I'm going to show you. Cause that's my personality. But a lot of people don't even try. And so don't let that stop you. Maybe they'll come along like Brandon did. I mean, you weren't against it, but some people are like, no way. Right. They're very against it. Um, but it's worth it. I mean, don't get divorced over it, <laughs> but, but like, just show them and do it regardless of their opinions. And you can find people to, to do this business with you that are going to support you. And it's not always family. In fact, oftentimes it's not. And you're sort of a extra motivation to sort of prove the naysayers wrong. Show them. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you never know. You come back, you come from all sorts of different backgrounds. I never would have dreamed when I started off that I, I started off thinking, okay, I'm going to go to the trades. That's what my dad did. But eventually I moved to accounting and thought, okay, we'll do that. Then it was business consulting. And then all of a sudden I got into the not-for-profit sector and realized I actually like government relations. I would have never dreamed when I was doing that. I kind of thought, okay, this is my calling. I would have never dreamed of going for a meeting with um, members of parliament and senators and uh, local MLAs and that working with ministry officials to all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to go work for an after <laughs> But I, just I was so excited. To... All of a sudden it's like, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. I'm so happy to left that side and now do this. And you just never know. So it, I told somebody that to today that and they're like, so you're, like, what's your husband doing? I was like, oh, we do the Plexus business. <laughs> In her face. <laughs> She's like, that's that's real nice i was like no it's, it's for real like it's it's a thing like he's this is business you know <laughs> but a lot of people don't see it that way and i'm okay with that um i used to because he's always wanted to run his own business his dad did and i used to tell him i was like that freaks me out brandon i no way no way you need to get a job I, you're not running your own business and i just giggle now because i'm like oh babe you're, no no i'm i'm doing it <laughs> No, I'm running it, but I can't think, imagine anything different. I can't imagine asking for time off of work. I can't imagine having any other lifestyle than I have now. So I was so against owning any business. So, well, I don't, for the people that are just going to listen to the podcast, it's going to be hard to appreciate, but anyone that's going to watch this. <laughs> I talk with my hands. Well, so do I. But <laughs> what I was going to say is it's pretty evident with the smiles on both of your faces that this is something that you just love. Mm-hmm. Like this is not just a tiny piece of what you have to do to pay the bills. This is like become part and parcel of like who you are, mm-hmm. and I think that's amazing. Thank you. Um, it has been wonderful having you on the, the podcast today. I'm very grateful for both of you. As I alluded to earlier and mentioned before we started recording, the whole reason we even have this set is because when I reached out to Amanda, who I knew was like doing really well with this, and I said, "Hey, why don't you have the show?" You were pretty adamant that. <laughs> You needed to have your Brandon right there with you and you do this together. And yeah. so I think that's amazing. Um, as we wrap up the show today, is there any other kind of closing thoughts that you want, either one of you want to kind of share with anyone listening? Do you have anything? I had a quote I want to read. Okay. You had something you wanted to say? All right. So I just wanted to say, so this is a quote that I found. And it's from Mary Kay Ash. Don't limit yourself. Many people limit themselves to what they think they can do. You can go as far as your mind lets you. What you believe, remember, you can achieve it. So that's what I'm going to close with. I, and I would just echo that. I've grown up loving business. 
from a young age, that was always what I was going to do. And you know what, if there's people out there who are looking for ways to, they want that ability, it's, it's hard work being self-employed, but if that's something you want and you just don't know how to get into it, network marketing can be a really good opportunity for that. You don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to go invest in a franchise mm-hmm. or invest in some product development. You can go in and for very little, like what, 10 bucks is <laughs> our, our, the fee to start with Plexus to become an ambassador for the company. And you can, it's a very affordable way to do that if, you're, if it's something you're inclined to do, but know that it is going to be work. It's a business. If you want to succeed, it's going to be work, but it's definitely, work. I, I love it. It's definitely worth the while. Thank you. Um, we'll put some content information for you guys if you're okay with that in our show notes and so people mm-hmm. can reach out to you. Sure. Um, they find you on Facebook at Amanda Simmons. I don't know if it's any more specific than that. Yeah, Amanda Simmons Gander. <laughs> it might be easier to find. Gander's my my maiden name. So Amanda Simmons Gander, if you see me there. And Brandon, are you on social as well? I am. And I can never remember. That's okay. My, uh, I think it's just Brandon O. Simmons. They'll see you taped on all my but, posts. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm imagining what may happen is people are going to listen or watch this and they're going to be like, I definitely need to connect with these people. They're, they can show me, they can help me, they can get me through whatever kind of momentary challenge or long-term challenge I'm facing. I just felt something when I was listening to them talk. Yeah. So I'm assuming that you're okay if people reach out to you and yeah, look for, for sure. help. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you for being on the show today. We've been spending the time talking about network marketing and I don't know about anyone else. But I have gained a very interesting, positive perspective on what has typically been a very negatively viewed com- a topic. And um, so thank you for shedding some much needed light on yeah, it, probably undeserved you. reputation that this often gets. Wonderful. So it's been great to share. And thanks for having us. Yeah, you're welcome. So again, my name is Mr. Chill. Thank you for joining us. Uh, grateful to Brandon Simmons and Amanda uh, Simmons for coming on. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. You've been listening to the Business Speak podcast featuring Mr. Chill. Be sure to subscribe and add us to your podcast library to ensure you never miss an episode. We love hearing from our listeners. If you have a topic or question you'd like us to discuss, would like to be a guest on our show, or would otherwise like to get in touch with us, please visit our website at businessspeak.ca. Thanks for listening to Business Speak, the language of business simplified simplified